In this video, I will be continuing my Halloween series, which features a set of supernatural sisters. Already completed are Candy the Candy Corn Witch and Sable the Succubus. Before starting the project, I create the character design for the doll. The base for this project will be an Ashlyn Ella doll, just as I've used for every sister so far. I had bought her from another customizer and she had some damage. She came to me with a broken neck pig. The neck pig itself was stuck inside of her head. And in order to make the repair and get it out, I have to heat her head up with my hair dryer. This makes the vinyl pliable so that I can reach inside of the hole with my pliers to pull the neck peg out. Thankfully her hair is still usable and it's perfect for this project. So I'm going to be keeping that and setting the head to the side while I fix the neck. Thankfully the small plastic ring that actually holds the neck peg in place was still intact and it was just the top piece that had broken off. To repair the neck peg, I thread some elastic through a large yarn needle. Then I loop the elastic underneath of the plastic ring that's inside of her neck. Then I use a small wooden bead it's a little larger than the neck hole. I tie the bead tightly and cut the elastic. Off screen, I heat up her head and pop it back on. Before beginning, I coated the doll in two coats of Mr. Super Clear. Since our character today is no longer among the living, I will be starting off the repaint by giving her a paler complexion. I use an applicator to apply soft pastels directly to the doll. I did forget to sand the plastic this time to give it more grip, but thankfully it seems like it's held very well. I use a soft brush to blend out the pastels. I'm not exactly sure how many coats of white pastel I used, but I believe it was two or three. I did not want her to be exactly like sheet white, like Spectra, Vondergeist, or Katrine de Mew. Once I'm satisfied, I move on to the face-up. I use a light brown watercolor pencil and sketch in her face. Off screen, I have the concept art drawing that I did that I'm using as a guide for drawing her face. While you watch me work on the face-up, I would like to talk a little bit about the concept behind this doll. According to Wikipedia, a white lady is a type of female ghost, typically dressed in a white dress or a similar garment, reportedly seen in rural areas and associated with local legends of tragedy. White lady legends are found in many countries around the world. Why this is interesting is not just because I live in a rural area or because I lived in a rural area, but because this doll is based off of a ghost that I used to see whenever I was a child. I think I was probably seven to 13 years old. And I remember her walking down the hall with these beautiful wavy golden locks and this white nightgown. She would walk down the hallway I'd be sitting on my bed, drawing, and she just walked through my sister's door. And she never did anything. She wasn't violent, she wasn't mean, she didn't like make the lights flash, although we had electrical problems, so maybe she did. But I remember I always called her the white lady. And this was back before the internet, so I didn't realize that this was a thing. So I don't think that it's very good juju to like encapsulate an actual ghost into a physical doll. My concept is um, loosely based off of the original ghost that I used to see as a child. So while I don't know what happened to the beautiful woman that used to grace my hallway, I do know what happened to this white lady. On the night of her wedding, she was tragically murdered. She never got to be at peace or move on. And I'm trying to tell as much of her story, at least as far as her death goes, in her appearance. And of course she has a candelabra that I will be making later in the video. So back to the face up. I'm on about the third layer here. I've worked in a lot of cool tones to make her feel uh, less lifelike. Typically, you want to use more reds and browns, warmer colors to make it appear like there's blood running underneath of your character's face. With the ghost, I want the exact opposite of that. So I'm using lots of blues, browns, blacks, and grays. 
I deepen the eye sockets with pastels and pencils and make several passes to darken the colors. I did add a few veins to her face and gave her dark circles to make her appear sickly. As usual, I'm applying pastels directly with my applicator and then blending it out using a brush. This can be done for smaller areas as well and is very useful for creating dark circles. Even though her eyes are essentially glowing orbs, I wanted to go ahead and give her the shadow that you get from the top eyelid. So I'm adding darker pastels and blending them down. To make her eyes look like they're glowing more, I darken the scleras. Then I use my tortillion to blend the colors. Finally, when I'm happy with her face up, add a single layer of glow-in-the-dark yellow paint. To make the dress, I used a Requiem Arts pattern. I believe this was the Renaissance Mega Pack pattern. I modified the bodice to have a V-neck collar, and I used a modified puff sleeve that I tried to turn into a flutter sleeve, but it didn't scale properly, and you'll see later whenever the dress is complete. This was my first time sewing doll scale clothes on a full-blown sewing machine. Usually I hand sew. So I'm actually very pleased with how the bodice turned out. I sew a running stitch into the waist of the skirt. I place it on the doll and gather it to the proper width. Finally, I sew the bodice upside down to the skirt, turn everything out, and sew a closure onto the back. I did leave the skirt unhemmed because I felt that it fit the idea of her running through the woods and her skirt getting caught on brambles a lot better than a nice finished edge. In the original sketch, she has a nice wide waistband in her bodice, but actually applying different ribbons, I liked the look of the lace a lot better. I pin it to the bodice and cut it to size. Then I sew it in place on my machine. This was a little bit of work because I had to keep stopping and readjusting the bodice so that I didn't sew it shut. Because my flutter sleeves did not flow or fold correctly, I went ahead and sewed the sleeves in place to fake the wrinkle. Now it's time to add the dirt. I used coffee and coffee grounds to stain it. This took several passes and it kept bleeding up. So after enough attempts and um, fighting the dress, I eventually propped her up against my little mirror and just dripped the coffee down her skirt. I did also have to enhance the strength of the coffee because it wasn't dark enough. After this dried, I did wash the coffee out because it felt really gross to touch. <laughs> to make her candelabra, I took two toothpicks and I broke one of them in two places. Then I used my UV resin and a little UV flashlight to glue those breaks and pieces together. I used hot glue to actually build up the shape of the candlestick and to do the sculpting. I start by reinforcing the middle joint and then adding in the candle holders.
To make sure I have a nice flat bottom, I pour glue onto my parchment paper and push the candlestick down into it. Once I'm satisfied, I give it a coat of black acrylic paint and then I dry brush it with gold acrylic paint. This took two coats before I was satisfied with it. For the candlesticks, I wanted something that was a point of visual interest. Everything is relatively monotone and there's not very much texture going on throughout the entire design. So instead of just using regular white candlesticks, I'm using glitter glue sticks. I use the remaining hot glue that's in the gun to stick the candles onto the candelabra. Then I insert the glitter glue into the gun and add a lot of drips and carve out melted pieces for the candles. To finish it off, I cut some red embroidery thread, melt down the tops of the glue candles and force it down into the melted glue with a toothpick. Not bad. I think this is actually one of my favorite parts of the stall. So typically when I curl doll hair, I use a screwdriver and a hair straightener. However, because this is the factory hair, it was rather temperature sensitive and it either was too low of a temperature and the curl fell out or it was too high and the hair melted. So I had to actually go ahead and use the straw curler and bobby pin method, which is, this is the first time that I'm using this method and I actually ran out of bobby pins. In order to keep the curls in place, I used sewing pins and stuck them through the tops of the straws and into the doll's head. This actually kept the straw curlers in place a lot better than the bobby pins did. I was worried that if I poured boiling water down over the doll's face that I might melt it. I typically try to pour it away from it, but with the curls, I needed to get really close to the edge of her eyes. So I dip her in some hot water and then I transfer her to a tub of ice water. This is actually the method that some doll hair suppliers recommend you use in order to keep the fibers holding their shape. I did get impatient at the end to see her hair finished and I very lightly blow dried her hair with my hair dryer. Now to put it all together. Typically, I don't think about naming my dolls until a month or two after they've been completed, but I know this girl's name. Her name is Valerie. Do you like ghost stories? Have you ever seen a ghost? Feel free to let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear all about your spooky experiences. As always, like if you liked the video, subscribe if you would like to see more, and I'll see you next time.